Tonight, I'm here with a special guest. I have King Trevor on the show, who is a fellow podcaster. Hello, King. How are you? I'm doing very well. How are you, Linnea? I'm good. Thank you. So thank you so much for coming on the show. I'm a fan of your podcast. Oh, I appreciate that a lot. Thank you. Yeah, I thank love you it. For having me. I really enjoy it. Yep. All right. Where are you from? Um, I was born and raised in Queens, uh, born and raised in Jamaica, Queens. Right now I reside in Far Rockaway. So yeah, I'm a New York, New York city kid through and through. Oh, awesome. Okay. So, tell, so I know about your podcast cause I listen to it very frequently, but tell the people about your podcast, like the name of it and what it entails. Yeah, absolutely. So I host, uh, the King's Speech podcast, uh, with a, like a really like select few hosts, uh, co-hosts, uh, one most notably that I'm actually like vetting as like my permanent co-host right now. We talk about current events, social issues, um, pop culture issues, um, like anything that's like really popular in, in the world of like hip hop or sports. Um, I kind of dive into it and then also talk about my own personal experiences through life, whether it's relationships or dating, um, family issues, friend issues, just things that like the normal, like 30 something year old guy would go through. Um, and then just like, just really hope that there are people out there that can resonate with it. Um, and that can relate to it. We do like a video component of of it as well. Uh, on my YouTube channel, we do like different episode clips and yeah, just, just, you know, potting for the love of it. Um, I have a major in broadcast journalism, so this is a very like great outlet to my passion besides, you know, doing the regular work that I do. I work like as a, um, as a fitness coach and personal trainer and gym manager and all that other stuff. That's like my regular nine to five really doesn't compare to like the opportunity. I feel like I had to, you know, host my podcast and uh, just like put good content, but could good content out into the world. Yes. I love it. Y'all need to check it out. Cause it's so dope. I love it. And I love the visual too. Cause I don't, you know, some of us, you know, we just do audio only, but it's nice mm-hmm. to see the visual as well. Yeah. It's, 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 it's added like a really great component to the, to the show, to all the content. Um, a lot of people are very visual. A lot of people aren't like us and will sit down and lock in for an hour and a half and listen to somebody talk. So that's really a, a good like preview to it to like get people in and get people engaged. So it's, it's, it's done wonders. Yep. Yep. I agree. All right. So I invited you on the show because, you know, I talk to so many women, you mm-hmm. know, I talk to a lot of women. Like yes, I got the Queen series. <laughs> I started the Queen series on here and I'm like, you know what? I got to shake stuff up. You know, I got to get some men on here and talk to some men. Yes. Cause I got love for the Kings too. You know, I love my women, you know, cause I am one, but I got love for the Kings too. So, you know, and you're the first one of my King series. So I'm so happy. I'm honored. Very honored. And it's great too, because my audience is mostly guys like every Every single like metric and then the feedback that I get on social media is mostly guys. So I'm definitely, you know, looking to like tap in and just like, you know, spread the King speech, you know, podcast stuff to your audience as well. Yes, that's awesome. Yeah. Yes. So, so I have to ask you, what are your thoughts on women getting plastic surgery? Women getting plastic surgery. I, I do believe it has to come from a very you know, secure place. It, it is a, it is a life changing thing. And just like any other surgery is really risky. So you're taking a chance, mm-hmm. but I feel like if a woman is doing it for the right reasons, um, then they can do whatever they, they feel they need to see fit to do to their body. You know, as long as it's within health guidelines, uh, they're taking all the proper like mental and physical, uh, precautions to make sure it goes smoothly. It's fine. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I just, um, I guess I have, I have mixed feelings on it. How do you I feel? Just, you know, I feel like it's just being a woman and a woman and knowing that I've actually had those thoughts too, as far as getting plastic surgery, I think, but it's, mm-hmm. it's, it's, it's like a bigger thing. It's like, you're trying, it's almost like you're trying to mask something else with the surgery. You know what I mean? Like it's, yeah. it, it doesn't, and that's why I kind of went against it because I was all for it at first, but I was like, you know what? I'm not doing it for the right reasons. I wasn't doing it, mm-hmm. you know, for the right reasons. I was trying to match, you know, something that I was not dealing with. So, 
I decided against it. And I'm not, and I'm not saying for every woman that that's the case, mm-hmm. you know, and again, you know, everybody is free to do what they want, but I do think in some cases, you know, women are just trying to hide something, you yeah. know, that's yes. deeper. Yeah. Some people try to use it as a cure all for issues that they may have that they probably haven't dealt with or, you know, haven't talked to anybody about, which is why <laughs> I think if you're going, if it's something that you're going to do, it's. I feel like you should probably like talk to a therapist or, you know, have like multiple consultations with doctors, the type of doctors that are just looking to like, you know, get money from you to, you know, do a certain procedure, but the kind that actually care about, you know, how you'll feel during and how you'll feel afterwards. Because if it's a situation where you're just trying to fix one thing, as soon as you're done, you're going to look for so many other things and, you know, it's going to end up being a really routine thing, you know, making that you know, that, that yearly visit to the plastic surgeon. I agree. I, I totally agree. Yeah. Um, yeah. Now, what are your top three things that women do that annoy you? Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, top three things that women do that annoy me. Um, I'm going to say give bad directions when I'm driving. I'm going to say that. <laughs> <laughs> That's definitely a thing. Um, uh, I'm going to say, hmm, probably, probably I've, I've been around some women and dated some women that were very passive aggressive mm-hmm. and that kind of, that kind of is a pet peeve for me is kind of something that, that frustrates me a lot. Uh, I do prefer like the direct approach, uh, easier, easier to communicate that way. And, uh, the third thing that I would say, uh, would bother me. Uh, the driving thing definitely bothers me. The passive aggressive thing definitely bothers me. Um, I'm gonna go with you know if the, if there's ever like a lack of transparency, like I'm I'm big on stuff like that. Um, I'm big on you like you know telling me how you feel when you feel it, us talking about it, being direct about it. Um, I don't like when things are hidden. So I think those those would be like the the, the things for me. Okay. Awesome. Okay. Y'all yeah. Hear that, ladies? all right what inspires you to keep going uh just to keep going in general or just like just to keep going like what what inspired you to keep like podcasting and you know when you're working out in a gym like what keeps you like going and you know not giving up uh i would say in regards to to the podcast it's like i i just i just go throughout the day every single day with so many different ideas and thoughts that pop into my head and um, so many of them I really feel like are unique. And I, and I know you probably can understand that as well. Uh, mm-hmm. It's like seeing um, certain things happen with certain family members or in relationships and friends. And you just know it's a, it's a really like broad thing. And if you have the voice and the audience to express it, you might bring some kind of clarity to a person that might be going through the same thing. Uh, and then it's just fun. Like it's fun to make fun of celebrities like that do dumb shit. Uh, <laughs> it's <laughs> like it, it's fun to like talk about your different like funny experiences um, when it comes to like dating or friendships or relationships. Uh, it, it's it's just fun, and it's fun to do it with somebody that you like, uh, which is why like I've been fortunate enough to have co-hosts that I that are actually my friends and and people that if I wasn't just talking to them and recording what we were saying that, you know, we'd still actually go out and have a good time and enjoy ourselves. Uh, and then as far as, um, as far as like fitness goes, I'm just big on, you know, taking care of your body and doing the things that you need to do so that when you're old and gray, you can still take care of yourself. You can still be functional. Um, I feel like especially like in the black community, we don't take a lot of, uh, we don't put a lot of stock in being healthy uh, whether it's like being physically active or, you know, having a diet that's going to sustain us a long life. And I look at like, like some of the older, oldest people that I know in my family, you know, throughout their lives, they've, they've been active, they've, you know, eaten well. And that's just something that I guess they passed down to me and something that I'm trying to, you know, communicate to the people that I work with, uh, that I coach and just doing it on a really like, you know, relatable level. Like not everybody's going to go to the gym and bench 500 pounds every day. Like that's not a thing, you know what I'm saying? But you know, anybody, anybody can get up and, you know, jog, anybody can, you know, pick the right things at the supermarket, just like making little, you know, little, um, 
conscious decisions to make sure that you're healthy. So I, I guess those would be the things that push me. Yes. I like, that's so true though. We, we don't, we don't take care of ourselves like we should, mm-hmm. you know, I, I agree with that for sure. Absolutely. Yep. So it's good what you're doing though. It's really good. Yep. Now, what is your biggest fear? My biggest fear It's funny. I just did, uh, we did a segment on that, um, on my last show. My biggest fear is, I have two biggest fears. So like one of them is like a real fear. The other one is just like a, like a very like cosmetic superficial fear. So mm-hmm. the superficial fear is losing my hair. Uh, I, I will, I will not look good bald. And I have a lot of, I have a lot of friends my age who are balding or have already balded. And I just know it's like a matter of time and a countdown. So, uh, that is, that's like a huge fear for me. And then, uh, like the real fear is just not, you know, not being present for the people that I care about. Um, you know, either, you know, not being able to tend to a certain emergency or something like that. And then something bad happens because I couldn't respond. That's, uh, that's a huge fear that I have also. Mm-mm. You're, you're going out a little bit. You coming like in and out. Can you, oh. Yeah. Can you hear me? Hear me good? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, yeah, good. I can hear you now. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so um, so it would be losing my hair and then definitely uh, not being able to be present for the people that I care about. Those mm-hmm. would be my fears, yeah. Okay. All right. Now, what are your thoughts on marriage? Marriage? Uh, I think marriage is great, but I never, I've never, I don't know, maybe it's cause, maybe because I'm a guy and because my like parents divorced in the early 90s, mm-hmm. but um, I've never thought of marriage as... I think what a lot of other people think of marriage, like people think of it as the wedding and the pomp and the circumstance and the party and the open bar and shit like that. And I love a good wedding with an open bar. Love it. Um, But I I always think of it as just like the partner piece, Um, being able to, you know, be with your partner every day and, you know, find new and exciting ways to show them that you care about them, uh, to keep all of that passion like alive for as long as you can. Uh, and then even like when children are involved, doing your best to, you know, of course, make sure your kid is good, but make sure that you're taking care of each other uh, to not lose that passion, not lose that fire. I feel like marriage is about also discovering like what each of you is best at. So if I'm best at handling money, I handle money. If my wife is best at handling money, then she handles money. Like if I'm, if she's the best driver, then she drives. If she's the best with, you know, a hammer and a screwdriver, then she does that. Um, and then of course, like we make compromises to support each other in the things that we're best at. Mm-hmm. And I think that's how it, I, I think that's how it should go. Yes. I love that. And I was just talking about this to a friend, you know, so many people focus on the wedding, like yeah. you said, you know, the open bars, the reception, the dress, you know, who's going to be in it. It's like, it's this flashy thing. And then no one's thinking about what's, what's going to happen after though, after the, the flashy is over and the wedding is over. Everybody's gone home. You got to start your life together. Like then what, you know what I mean? And people don't think about that. No, that's, that's the biggest piece to it. It's, it's no, once somebody, I guess I feel like when somebody like proposes and then they're engaged, it goes straight into planning this event instead of actually like preparing for life together. I also have a friend that watches um, 90 Day Fiance. I need to check that out too because I heard that's really good. Oh yeah, that's dope. 90 Day Fiance is awesome. Like people, the people that are together that have no business being together. It's amazing. <laughs> amazing. Yeah, I got, I got to check it out. I heard like, <laughs> getting scammed and all that stuff. Yeah, sick. Sick people. Oh my God. I got to watch it. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So here we are in 2020. Like how do you feel being a black man in America? Well, that's deep. Um, I, you know, you can't help but be cautious. You can't help but watch the news and, you know, feel like you are targeted to a certain extent, um, you, you know, and feel like the law doesn't really kind of apply to you the way that it applies to everybody else. I think those are feelings that you can't help, uh, especially with the, the recent news, the, the very recent news um, that we got from Minneapolis. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we want accountability when these things happen and so often nothing happens there's a hashtag there's a t-shirt um there's athletes speaking out but there's never real you know tangible change that happens Mm -hmm. from these kinds of situations 
Um, I mean, you know, I'm conscious of it as I'm, when I'm driving. I'm conscious of it if I, um, you know, walking down the street in certain neighborhoods. So it's, it's, I mean, it's like we're all just like walking around with a certain degree of like PTSD every single time we see these things happen on television and we see that there's no accountability. And unfortunately, we kind of have to have that in the back of our heads and be super careful the way other people don't have to, but then also go out and, you know, make a living and support ourselves. And for people who have families, support their families. And it's kind of a, a burden that isn't really, you know, spoken about that much because it's, it kind of goes unsaid that that's just the way things are. Um, but I do feel like a lot of people would benefit if they do feel these feelings, if they do have that PTSD, if they do get emotional when they see these things, they would definitely benefit from, you know, like talking about it, like talking about it in the community um, and, and finding the best ways to, you know, spur some kind of action. Because mm-hmm. I think at this point, we definitely need some action. Like this, this whole, you know, posting and, you know, talking about it is, you know, it's, it's, I'm over that. I yeah. think a lot of us are over that. Yeah, for me, I don't even do a lot of posting. And for me, it's honestly to the point where it's like, if, if there's a video of like of an offense or a video of one of us getting murdered, I can't even, I don't even watch the videos anymore, honestly. Like, I'll, if, there's, if there's a photo, I'll see the photo. I'll read the story just to make sure I'm educated on it. And I know what's happening. But I can't, I, I can't watch those videos anymore. Those things destroy my day. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm so sad that I watched it. It's hard because it's hard to get rid of that image. Yeah, that imagery you know, is it's, tough. It's difficult. Very. And it's why I'm always interested in hearing about the black man's experience because you have, you have, you know, us being black in America as a whole and then you have a black woman in America and then you have the black man in America. So there's so many different experiences, you know. Yeah. And it's just, you know, it's just sad that here we are still going through the same things. It's ridiculous. It's despicable. It's extremely sad. Uh, But one thing I have to give credit for, you mentioned black women. Like, you guys always, 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 always have our backs, whether it's, like, good times or bad. Um, You know, and, and, and a lot of times, like, when these things happen, like, you guys just step up even more. Uh, Just recognizing, just like you mentioned, like, recognizing that you know, you go out for a drive or, you know, you go out with your family and you encounter the, the wrong police officer at the wrong time, you know, that that could be it. Like, you can never see that person again. You can never see your brother or your dad or your son again. So um, I definitely feel like the outpouring of love uh, when it comes to black women and it comes to these issues in our country. So that's that's that, that's an amazing feeling. But you're right, like, there there does have to be some type of, like, tangible action to at least at least start holding people accountable. At least that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That would be a start. Absolutely. Like, we have to stop, you know, and people have to really, you know, because you have some people that are still in denial, too. You know, they don't see what the problem is or not. I'm like, it, it could be right there in their face, and they're still denying that there's a problem. And that's that's also frustrating. Well, that's, no. that's their privilege, you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It, it's just it's just like I'm, I'm just so tired of it. I'm mm-hmm. so, like, scared for my boys. Like, I have two sons, and I'm uh-huh. just, I fear for them because you just don't know. It could be them. Yeah. And, you, and, it, and we don't have to do anything. We could just literally just exist, exist in a certain space, um, and... And, and anything could possibly happen or we could be approached by somebody and, you know, give the wrong response or answer a question incorrectly. And, you know, any, anything can anything can happen. It's, it's 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 tough to go out with that mindset every day. But, you know, unfortunate, unfortunately, it's, you know, it's your mindset as soon as it's, it's a guy's mindset as soon as they hit puberty and walk out that door. Honestly, like if like as a 15 year old, 16 year old, 17 year old uh, guy, a black guy, black kid walking down the street, like you're aware of it. And, and it, it's, it's, it's like a thing that, you know, that other people don't have to grow up with. It's not a thing that they have to develop. It's not a, you know, it's not a part of their growing up with their maturity, but it is, it is for us. Mm-hmm. And that's the sad part. Yeah. That's the sad part. Like you could just literally just be minding your business, like doing nothing, you yeah. know, and it could be your day, mm-hmm. you know, and that's just, it's just so messed up. And I'm just like, I, it's hard to be on social media right now and just seeing everything in the feeds, like that's difficult to just 
have to digest all of that. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a lot and it's heavy, you know. It's very so, difficult. I just very. I don't know. It's just it's just messed up, and I'm so tired of it. But you know, he unfortunately the truth of the matter is he he won't be the last. He will not be the last. Um, I mean, the only solace that you can really take from it is that it seems the mayor is as outraged about this as anybody should be. Mm-hmm. Um, but like we always say, like there has to be the follow through. We always get the initial news where it seems like things are going up or somebody might be held accountable. But then, you know, they burst the bubble maybe like a month or two months right after that, where this guy is, you know, this person is not held accountable. They just get to go home to their families and get another job because he will find another job (laughs) despite being, you know, terminated from, from the police department. He'll go be security somewhere. Um, one of his, like one of his friends that share his ideology will make sure that he's okay for the rest of his life. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. For sure. He is not going to be hurt. Mm -mm. Mm-mm. At all. Yep. So now we come to the segment of the show that I call unpack your box. So okay. basically, you can say whatever you want. You have like a minute to just, you know, you can vent. You could just say whatever. It doesn't <laughs> okay. Um, unpack my box. Uh, whew. It's crazy. Oh, so um, one thing that I always like, like to stress um, on my platform is like feeling your feels, right? So um, just like the same like burden that you know, a lot of men and black men like walk outside when it comes to like social injustice. We also have the burden of carrying that, carrying that social injustice, and then also just carrying so many different issues that we deal with on a daily basis and not feeling like we need to express it or not feeling like we have the space to express it, right? So mm-hmm. I always feel like the the best, one of the best things that I ever did in my life was um, was like talk to a therapist. And I was able to unpack a lot of stuff on a weekly basis that none of my friends could help me with. And I always tell people, like, your friends are not equipped to handle your trauma. Like, every time you talk to somebody about your problem, it becomes an issue of them relating your problem to problems that they had in the past or they're going through right now. And all of a sudden, you expressing how you feel has been hijacked. So, um, I always believe like you should like create a space for yourself to express yourself, to unload shit, um, and find the person, the professional that you're paying to do that, uh, on. And I just, I just think it's important for guys like to feel their feels, feel their emotions. If a girl hurts you, just say that she hurt you and, you know, don't, you know, try to down your, your troubles with the fifth of Hennessy. Um, yeah. So I guess that's, I guess that's me unpacking the box. I love that. Yeah, <laughs> that was good. I love it. Thank you. You dropped some gems. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> yeah, so I think you're so dope. I want to thank you so much for coming on the show to chop it up with me. I want you to tell the people, again, you know, where they can find you, your websites if you have any, your uh, podcasts, the platforms, all that good stuff. Absolutely. It's my pleasure. Um, of course, I've got the King Speech podcast. Uh, the Instagram is at King Speech Five. Uh, King Speech Podcast is on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and SoundCloud. Uh, on YouTube, uh, just type in King Speech Podcast on YouTube, and the channel will come up. All uh, of my episode video clips, uh, some web exclusives are up there as well. Um, so indulge and enjoy. Yes, you guys go support him. Listen to his podcast. He is dope. He is super talented. Thank you so much. Thank you for the opportunity. I I had an amazing time. Yes, me too. Me too. All right, y'all. We out. All right. Peace. All right. That was so fun. Yes, it was. (laughs) Yes, I enjoyed talking to you. Thank you, thank you. No, it was it was it was dope. Definitely thank you for the um for the opportunity. It was it was a great experience. We definitely gotta do it again.